This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today we're going to learn about what's hysteresis. Webster's seventh new collegiate dictionary tells us hysteresis, a retardation of the effect when the forces acting upon a body are changed, as if from viscosity or internal friction, especially a lagging in the values of resulting magnetization in a magnetic material, such as iron, due to a changing magnetizing force. Hysteretic. There seems to be no etymological link between hysteresis and either hysterical, such as hystericus of the womb, or in history, inquiry, history, histor, or ister, means knowing or learned. This is too bad, as there are scientific connections to both words. There is no link, scientific or etymological, to histolysis, the breakdown of bodily tissues, or to blood. Hysteresis represents the history dependence of physical systems. If you push on something, it will yield. When you release, does it spring back completely? If it doesn't, it is exhibiting hysteresis in some broad sense. The term is mostly commonly applied, as Webster implies, to magnetic materials. As the external field with the signal from the microphone is turned off, the little magnetic domains in the tape don't return to their original configuration. This is by design, otherwise your record of the music would disappear. Hysteresis happens in lots of other systems. If you place a large force on your fork while cutting a tough piece of meat, it doesn't always return to its original shape. The shape of the fork depends on its history. Hysteresis loops happen when you repeatedly wiggle the system back and forth or cycle the field up and down. The magnetization of a tape will lag behind as the field sweeps up and as it sweeps down. The memory in the tape is the magnetization remaining as the field is released to zero from a large value. In magnetic tapes, this lag is repeatable. The shape of the loop after the first cycle is roughly the same as it is after many cycles. This is convenient for doing multiple recordings on the same tape. This is not true of many other systems. Forks, for example, after being bent back and forth many times will actually become stiffer, called work hardening, and then break. There is a class of metals called shape memory alloys that can be bent or stretched plastically large distances back and forth many times without work hardening. This super elastic behavior is only one property of these interesting materials. Many hysteretic systems make screeching noises as they respond to their external load, hence the natural connection with hysteria. I wanted to share the definition of hysteresis with you in relation to the recent narration I did for Andrew Hall called Eye of the Storm, Part 7. And the paragraph where you'll find this word is as follows. There is a local voltage difference between clouds that is stronger than the prevailing electric field of the storm between cloud and ground. Of course, it's all one field, but the direction of its potential shifts. The field becomes stronger between clouds due to phasing. As clouds discharge lightning, they discharge energy and then rebuild it from the inflowing winds. This sets up cycles with hysteresis, and two parts of a cloud or two storm cells get out of phase with each other, which creates a huge potential. The arc closes this voltage gap, and the path the arc takes predominantly follows a surface conductive path at the cloud's edge, where the condensate boundary forms a layer of charged particles where droplets form. The same thing happens in ground-to-ground -ground discharge, the subsurface and surface potential differences oscillating. This especially occurs if the normal path of conductance is blocked, as volcanoes evolve gas chambers of vapor that choke current flow. These oscillations can spike voltage between subsurface and surface, amplifying ground-to-ground -ground potential, and draw short-circuiting arcs from one side of the continental plate to the other, just like any capacitor would if you stripped the insulation from its edges. Again, I wanted to cover that word hysteresis because it's a word a lot of people don't know about. And it is a definite answer for helping you understand how our atmosphere and the earth under our feet have electrical charge potential and how it breaks down and leaves a record on the surface of our earth, just like that magnetic tape. I encourage you to go read Andrew Hall's last blog post on thedailyplasma.blog. Or if you're lazy, you can click this link for a narrated version. I'll see you on my next video update continuing Experiments in Electric Geology, ACDC, Part 2.